Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Maze Madman. Before we get started, hit the like and subscribe button and notification bell so you're aware every time I upload a video. In today's video, we're talking Michigan's offense and the biggest difference coming out of practice. We'll also speak about the new captains announced coaches, interim coaches, interim head coaches while Jim is suspended and much more. And as always, I'm upset. No disrespect, respectfully, but disrespectfully, it's disrespect. Don't be disrespectful. Those vile, disgusting Spartans, poor little girl, man. And I'ma tell them why I'm mad. That vile, disgusting cesspool in Columbus, the other state, and of course, as always. I'm up. Let's get right to it. Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh will serve a three-game suspension to start the 2023 season. That means he will be out for all of Michigan football's non-conference games. In the interim, he has come up with a plan for head coaching during his stead, and it will be a different head coach or combination of coaches for each game. Let's go through it. Game one, September 2nd against ECU, defensive coordinator Jesse Minter will be the head man getting all of the team and coaches ready for that tilt against ECU. Game two, September 9th, a combination of Jay Harbaugh, Jim Sun, and running back coach Mike Hart will be head coach. I think this is great. It's a great opportunity. Uh, from both Mike Hart and Jay Harbaugh, so we'll see how it goes. And finally, the last game of Jim's suspension, Game 3, we'll see offensive coordinator slash offensive line coach Sharon Moore lead the charge. And again, this is a great opportunity for all four of these coaches. Uh, they are all worthy of bigger and better opportunities Hopefully they don't take those opportunities, but I'm sure eventually they will. So Jim Harbaugh laying it out for each of these gentlemen to get a look and to lead the team. And what not too much. Uh, it shouldn't be too much stress for any of these coaches in this non-conference schedule. Even as a Michigan fan, I can admit this non-conference schedule is pretty weak. Maybe not as weak as last season's, but still pretty weak. We move on. In addition to Coach Harbaugh naming the interim coaches for his time away, that three-game vacation Michigan gave him, basically, the team also named team captains. And before you guys get in a tizzy, there is a blaring uh, player that is missing. That is J.J. McCarthy. But only seniors were uh, chosen to be team captains. Only seniors were eligible to be team captain so that should you know quell any concerns about the team not having full confidence in JJ because they do and we'll get into that in a little bit but those senior six captains by the way start with offensive linemen Zach Zinter and Trevor Keegan both of those guys key in Michigan's offense especially the run offense running back star running back Blake Corum and on the defensive side, Mark Mike Barrett, Mike Sandra still, and Chris Jenkins are all going to represent the Wolverines as captains. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. This is a great time to do that now. Uh, help the channel grow. It is a beautiful thing. Moving right along. Now let's move on to why the Wolverines offense is going to be much more explosive and versatile this upcoming season. And it really starts at the quarterback position. J.J. McCarthy has been handed the keys to the offense. This is going to be his second full year in the offense, really his first full year uh, as he did, like, you know, not start the first game of last season, although he did play. That said, McCarthy is the unquestioned leader and captain even if in 
spirit because he's not officially a captain of this football team. Jim Harbaugh and Sharon Moore have handed him the keys to this Lamborghini of an offense and have given him huge responsibility. Starting this season, J.J. will be able to audible out of plays. He'll be able to change protections at the line. He'll be able to do a myriad of things, which is very important for that position and the growth of that position. And we should see J.J.'s growth apparent out of all of the comments coming out of practices is that J.J. is in full command of this offense and J.J. looks sharp. So if that is the case, then Michigan should have no problem mowing through this schedule, if I'm being honest, all the way up until November where they get their stiffest competition at Penn State and then hosting the other state at the big house. So let me know in the comment section what you think of the news of J.J. getting, you know, more of a a leadership role or not just a leadership role, but more control in the offense, being able to audible and switch protections and things like that. This is obviously the next progression and great quarterbacks. Let me know what you think and if you think J.J. can be successful in doing so. Let's talk about it in the comment section below. Also, some news on some jersey changes is Roman Wilson has made the change from number 14 to number one, which is huge in Ann Arbor. Obviously, the likes of Anthony Carter, Braylon Edwards have worn that number one jersey at receiver. If Roman can do anything close to what those guys were able to accomplish, it would be tremendous for this Michigan offense obviously that number one is an iconic number for receivers at the University of Michigan and good luck to Roman and obviously he has confidence in his abilities to even you know take on that responsibility so I expect big things out of Roman Wilson let me know in the comment section what does Roman Wilson stack up amongst great wide receivers at Michigan. I know he's got to be pretty far down this season, but what are you expecting from him? Uh, or I'm sorry, pretty far down going into this season, but what are you expecting from him this season uh, that can maybe move him up that list? Let's talk about it. Moving right along the defensive side and more specifically the defensive backs, more specifically or even more specific than that, cornerback cornerback number two is still not been announced it is expected that josh wallace will be cornerback number two the transfer from umass however there are some rumblings uh that amorian walker will be the eventual starter at that position he also made a jersey switch to number one on the defensive side now of course Wearing number two at Michigan on defense is more important than number one. And we all know who wears that number two, Mr. Will Johnson, and who he, the shoes he's trying to fill wearing that number two of the great Hall of Famer, Charles Woodson. But I think Amorian Walker, like I've said many times, I think he's the best athlete on Michigan's team on either side of the ball. I do think he's raw at cornerback. He does have some things to work on, maybe uh, fundamentally. But eventually, eventually, I think he does take that spot from Josh Wallace. I, I would like to see Josh Wallace probably start the season as cornerback number two, um, just so we don't, you know, give up anything on the backside or the back end, rather. Uh, but let's see how Amorian progresses. Also, we definitely want to hang on to Amorian Walker. He is a jack of all trades, if you will. And I do expect him to see some snaps on offense as well. But let me know in the comment section how you feel about it. Who do you want to be cornerback number two? And with that said, it's that time I must bid you adieu. Until next time, stay angry, my friends. I'm upset. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this might be our best season ever. All right, right now, now I'ma calm down, so I'ma calm down, son. I don't, I don't, I just don't get that all that maze and that lock and all, right. all that puff. I just don't get it, son, okay, for just, real. Just calm and how the f 